It is Talking Reds, and I am Neil Atkinson, and I am joined by Chris Williams, uh, the very experienced and German specialised journalist, to talk about a wide variety of things. But first and foremost, and sometimes a bit of this gets lost, I think, Chris. Chris supports Liverpool behind. You can see a picture of Chris. Uh, well, not of Chris, but of Liverpool winning, I think, the Premier League last season. There's other stuff behind him as well. And it's painful at the minute, isn't it, Chris? It really is. I think it's the it's the nearest thing we're actually feeling to collective emotions at the minute. And normally with Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool, we're used to them being positive collective emotions. And at the minute, they're so, so negative. And I think that togetherness matters. But my God, togetherness hurts currently. Oh, yeah. It, it's the strangest season. Of, I've never known anything like it. So normally you would expect maybe a club loses a bit of form, maybe has a few key injuries. Um very rarely plays behind a closed door and we seem to have everything all at once um, and it's impacted a side that maybe was a little bit burnt out. I I mean, I've got a picture behind me there, Liverpool winning the league. I, I still don't feel like we won the league because I, I was never able to go into town. I was never able to meet up with my mates and celebrate it. And if I feel like that, how does everybody that slogged for two, three years to win that ultimate prize feel now? So... I can understand it a little bit, but it's it's awful to watch. And I think you can say it's awful to watch without wanting everybody sacked as well at the same time, because that's not going to change anything. I think a few things need to change, but certainly not the manager. And we don't need wholesale changes for me anyway. Um, it's just a very strange season. And I would like to think that once next season starts... And hopefully the grounds are full and it's a little bit more like we used to know. It will be back to the Liverpool we know, but you can't just assume that. But yeah, Manchester City the other year won everything and had a real difficult season after. Liverpool have won everything they've achieved or wanted to achieve in 30 years. They've won it all in two years. So maybe there has been a little bit of a drop off mentally. I think on that, I think there's a bit of, because we haven't had the moment of enjoying it, and I think in any way of football, one of the things is, you know, Shankly's metaphor of the river that doesn't stop flowing, I think sort of counts in that. Football is always, there's always a sentence about what is it that you're going to do tomorrow. But I think because we never got the big payoff of what we did yesterday, frankly, there's, there's, there's people feeling this strange sort of loss for something that hasn't happened. I, 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 there's a lot of, I think, quite difficult counterfactual sort of thinking that goes on. So, you know, one of the examples that I stumbled on this morning in an exchange I was having online, because that's now where we have most of our exchanges, mm -hmm. was someone saying that they should have strengthened from a position of strength in 2019 after winning the Champions League. And there's obviously an argument to have done that. But the flip side is, is that firstly, it's a manager who talked about wanting squad stability a lot of the time. And secondly, they then go on and fulfill our ultimate ambition and win 26 of the first 27. So, you know, it, you can easily frame a counterfactual, which says that if Liverpool make three signings and they integrate one of them away at Southampton in the second game of the season, they don't win that game 2-1, they draw it 2-2. And then from there, the season doesn't go the same way. But because we're living in the now and we never really got to enjoy the yesterday. That feels like, and as I say, I'm not having a go at anyone here, but that feels like a really valid point because we never got to enjoy winning that league. And I think that that skews thinking and makes it really hard, which football does anyway. Yeah, and I, I agree completely with that. And I've been guilty of that myself this past week, maybe thinking, did we not strengthen from that position? If you remember after, I think I was flying back in from Warsaw after that game in Kiev and um, Fabinho being signed as yeah. soon as I landed. And that was like, wow, that was a real lift. Um, and yeah, it we didn't really have that. The players we brought in, maybe, but then... I remember tweeting on after we beat Watford, signed someone very, you know, um, flippantly because everybody said Liverpool were going to struggle because he didn't sign anybody. And, and then, as you quite rightly said, went and blew everybody out of the water. You know, possibly one of the best three quarter seasons anyone's ever seen, really, domestically. Um, but when you look back now, I think there is a tendency, in hindsight's great, isn't it? But um, in that particular moment, I think Jurgen Klopp was happy and. I know I'm people proven have right to be. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. And that's the yeah. thing. And that's what I think is really difficult with this is that, you know, the, 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 what's hard now to remember the lived experience of is that they were happy and then they won 26 out of 27 games because it now feels like a lifetime ago because of lots of circumstances. I think that that's the thing to remember, that they would, they, they didn't just, like, they got it right. If, you, if the argument is, could they be in better, Nick, now in general, the answer to that might be yes, but they might not have been league champions. 
And I think that that's what's a really difficult thing to sort of get your head around, not least because they win the league by as many points as they do. But for instance, I use that Southampton game as an example. You know, it was a really tight game, the second game of the season. And then that evening, City dropped points to Spurs. There's an alternative universe where Liverpool drop points and City go out and blow Spurs away because suddenly Liverpool have dropped points and they feel great. What I'm saying here is that these are really fine margins, but when you win the league by as many points as Liverpool ended up doing, it doesn't feel like it was fine margins. No, it doesn't. And and if you if, if Liverpool had gone out and bought four or five players, maybe there isn't that cohesiveness that, that drove that team on to do so well because there was such a tight-knit formed unit. There's nobody saying, well, actually, I want to be starting and I should be ahead of him. There's none of that. Everybody knew the best 11, 12, 13 players were and, and the squad players knew their positions. If they came in, they could do a job and maybe Liverpool wouldn't have had that. But... Yeah, I mean, has to say hindsight's great, but I mean, I, I won't have anybody tell me Liverpool didn't win a real league title because it was behind closed doors. I, I won't have that, but I do occasionally think to myself, I was denied that opportunity. Like when Liverpool, uh, when Chelsea beat Manchester City, you know, I was in a garden with a lad who's seventeen now, and you know, we had a drink and set some fireworks off and some flares, but it's nowhere near what we experienced twelve months before when. You know, we started at um, Allerton Road, at the top end of Allerton Road, and then we jumped on the train and, and made it into town. You can't make up for that experience. And as I say, you know, if I'm a player and I've struggled and strived to get that, and then all of a sudden I don't have that two-way interaction with the people who, who I did it for, then maybe something's missing and, and hopefully get to win it in, you know, as you would want to. Um, it's just very typical, isn't it? 30 years and then... We don't get to all go out to town and, and get very drunk and spend too much money eating fine food. <laughs> there is, before we talk about the Leipzig game, Chris, which does remain Liverpool's only realistic uh, chance of, firstly, Champions League qualification and secondly, obviously, glory this season. There, there is, for this side right now, there is a big challenge, isn't it, that they've ended up, I think, slightly creating for themselves, slightly being created by circumstance, which is how to deal with a degree of adversity, especially at Anfield all of a sudden, and how to degree, how to deal with sides that drop into a shell. They shouldn't have that problem with Leipzig, not least because they've got themselves 2-0 ahead against Leipzig, but they may not have that problem for the rest of the Champions League campaign, but they do suddenly have a problem that game after game after game, they're coming up against sides who, even if they play expansively in patches, Put them, Southampton are a good example of that. Brighton are a good example of that. And now Fulham are a good example of that. You know, all those sides in, in phases of that game play some really good football, but they also have extended periods of time where they just drop back into a really compact shell and effectively put 11 men within 30, 40 yards of their own goal. And the reason why they're doing that, Chris, is because it's really working against Liverpool and they need to solve that pretty quickly. Yeah, they do. And I hate to go on about absentees and injuries, but... Uh, clubs do that now, teams do that because they know that Liverpool aren't that comfortable without their main centre backs to push on to play as high, for the wing backs to be as high. They're not they're not as comfortable to do that. So let's just drop back and, and say come and open us up. And there's a little bit of fear in there. And you know, I think we saw against Leicester what, what happens if that goal goes against you. There's a little bit of that confidence has gone. And all of a sudden, this is what Liverpool used to do to teams. They'd score one and then inside of five, six minutes, yep. it'd be three, four nil and game over. And unfortunately, that's happened you know, towards maybe once. But it is frustrating to watch and you can only play with the, the, the team you've got. And I've, I've done it myself, said maybe we should change shape. But if you've trained for three seasons to play a particular way, you can't just change it overnight. Um, that, that's what a pre-season's for. Don't forget, I don't think we had a proper pre-season either. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to work on for Liverpool, but it's only been able to work in a set parameters at the moment. You can't go out and get a new player in. You can't go out and and suddenly decide you're going to play four two three one or four one three two, and it's going to work because there needs that adaptation time, which you don't get when you're playing four or five games in ten twelve days. Uh, on that, Liverpool find themselves in a situation coming up against uh, Leipzig. I'll be talking to Chris about that in a minute or two. But before then, uh, yesterday for the moment, Josh Sexton sc uh, spoke to Damian Hughes, friend of the show, uh, within the moment about Liverpool's struggles and problems and what happens next. And you mentioned the, the fatigue element there, and it would obviously be sort of remiss if, if we didn't talk about Liverpool's injuries because that is obviously the, the sort of big theme around Liverpool's season and it's something that's, that's not going away either. And I'm intrigued by... 
the psychology around this because I suppose when I try and when I try and empathise with Liverpool as, as a squad who are losing these players, I'm almost trying to rationalise it by saying, well, if I was in work and all of a sudden, you know, people were dropping like flies and every, everybody was off sick, how, how would that make me feel about my sort of working day? And it, it must be tough psychologically, psychologically, particularly when the way it's happened to Liverpool, it's, it's so many big so many big characters, some of the biggest characters in the dressing room and, and those leaders as well, which are no longer there with you on the pitch. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think that the injury toll is significant. And I think that again comes from some of it will just be the sheer intensity that these guys have been operating at for the last two or three years. And again, don't underestimate that lack of turnaround and uh, 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 will have played a part in that. So, what we all do in times of pressure is we look for like a bit of an escape route or an excuse or a back door. And I think that there will inevitably be some of the players there in the Liverpool squad that would have, that would have seen some of the uh, the big leaders within that dressing room fall in that then would have had, had, even if it was unconsciously, a bit of a, this is the reason, that's our excuse, this is a justification why things have fallen away. And I think that must be intensely frustrating for the coaching staff there, starting with Klopp, because, you know, that whole phrase of being mentality monsters, that you're better than any excuse, you're better than uh, the worst referee, you're better than any injuries or setbacks that come your way. Uh, It must be hugely frustrating for him to know that somewhere unconsciously some of those excuses have started to creep in. Great stuff there from uh, Josh and uh, Damien. Uh, back with Chris now, but if you want more of that, you can go to theanfieldrap.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to get it. Download our app from all the obvious places that you download apps from, and also you get tokens within there as well, so you can use them if you do want to watch Josh speaking to Damien. Do do that. It cheered me up massively. Uh, Damien talks a lot of sense, and it's excellent to be able to call on him every now and again to offer us that. Um Leipzig since Liverpool beat them, Chris, and and I feel like Liverpool. It's it's worth dwelling on the fact that Liverpool deserve to win that game, in my eyes. Um, Leipzig have won every game they've played since uh, all four of them. Find themselves second in the table. Find themselves, I think, feeling pretty good. There's an interesting Angelino interview today with Jonathan Liu in the in the Guardian where he where he points out that you know Leipzig season isn't over. The pressure's more on Liverpool than it is on Leipzig. That might be what they're telling themselves. But they are coming up against a very vulnerable Liverpool despite the 2-0 uh, disadvantage. And they're a funny side. And they're a side who will go in with a level of confidence, but they're also a side who are just about used to coming off second best in these fixtures. Yeah, it's a strange one. I thought Leipzig would play a lot better in that first leg. Um, so did I. I thought the way... Yeah. I thought I thought they were very poor defensively. Their shape was awful. They weren't as aggressive as they normally were. I don't think they control the midfield areas properly. Uh, they made two critical errors, which Liverpool punished um, brilliantly. Uh, and their whole game was maybe a couple of percent below. It sort of looked like they were a little bit afraid. They, they'd made this Champions League knockout stage. They'd drawn Liverpool. All the, the press stuff that went on before it, Nagelsmann against Klopp, of course, it's big news in Germany. So I think there's a lot of pressure came with that game. But yeah, afterwards, they've gone back to their how they normally play. I mean, they came from 2-0 down against Borussia Mönchengladbach to win 3-2 with a very final um, stoppage time goal or added time goal. Um, and, and they've played wonderful football, most recently against Freiburg on the weekend. They're very, very patient picked apart um, a Freiburg side that's been good overall this season, plays well above its weight, very small club, very small finances, but consistently gets the top half of the table. So for them to pick them apart the way they did and to win 3-0, and I don't know if you've been able to see it, but that third goal is wonderful team goal, one, two-touch football across the whole pitch. Um, It's it's a warning for Liverpool, but Liverpool have got that beauty of having a a 2-0 advantage on away goals but you know in a neutral stadium very strange but um it, it's going to be a very interesting game for me should there be an early goal i think if it's liverpool early goal i think pretty much game over potentially um but if it's a leipzig early goal there's a lot of, of issues come into play straight away especially from a liverpool side and leipzig will fancy their chances if that happens so i think the first 20 minutes of this game are going to be crucial to to the rest of it to be honest 
I think with Leipzig, there's a couple of things. One, as you mentioned, that Munchen Gladbach game, and it was interesting to me, they lined up, it looked to me, at least from dispatches, like more of a back four, more of a 4 2 3 1 than the three they play against Liverpool. I think the other thing, Chris, as well, is I suspect with Nagelsmann and with the idea that it is in a neutral venue, you know, we can we can talk about the away goals thing because it's going to bite somebody and the season Liverpool are having, you feel like it might bite them first. You know, for me, there's... If I'm Nagelsmann, for instance, one of the things I'm saying to me players is you're going to need to score three. Buy into the idea that you're going to need to score three and that you've got 90 minutes to get three goals. That's ages. You can do that. You can do that against this Liverpool team at the moment. You can get three goals. And then the question becomes, well, what happens the other way? And I think that that's a really interesting sort of dynamic for this because that's all, you know, if ultimately if, if, if for me, if Leipzig score three, Liverpool obviously need to get two. Uh, there's no there's no prospect of extra time then in that in that in that environment either, and I do wonder whether or not that might well be what what Nagelsmann's outlook is, and also the idea of with this Liverpool side at the minute, whenever you get the first one, there's a chance they panic and crumble, and you can get them pretty quickly. You know, if you're Nagelsmann, nil nil on seventy is not a disaster, and if anything, the tension would only be ratcheted up on Liverpool. Yeah, it would, and I think. It was key to watch them. I know Freiburg are nowhere near the quality of Liverpool, but it it was key for me when I watched them on the weekend for just how patient they were. This mm. was a game that brought added pressure for them because Bayern were playing Dortmund later on, so they had the chance to go top of the league, um, which is which is a big statement for them to make. And as I say, Freiburg's a difficult opponent to play away. Christian Strike sets his side up brilliantly, but the way they dealt with just picking Freiburg apart and the added pressure of winning you go top and you find yourself in a title race. The way they dealt with that was a bit of a warning sign for me for this coming week. Um, would they show the same sort of patience? But then you would expect Liverpool to to be able to play a higher line and be a little bit more aggressive than Freiburg were. And once that first goal went in, I think their heads went down. And would that happen to Liverpool in this situation? You've already mentioned it's possibly the only way now they'll qualify for the Champions League again is by going and win it. I think in that first game, I think Liverpool, you saw the players themselves, they raised their game, something that I've not seen in the Premier League of late. So there's a real few interesting dynamics to this, but it's going to be, as I say, you're, you're quite right there, 70 minutes. You never know at this side, maybe even an 85 minute goal. And then we've seen it ourselves throughout time. Yeah. And you're quite right. 90 minutes to get three goals is a lot. It's not that long ago. You know, you and I, was sat in in Anfield and Liverpool needed three goals in ninety minutes and they got four. So um, yeah, I'd never write anybody off at this particular stage of competition. Do you think Liverpool will go through, Chris? I hope Liverpool will go through. Um, you know, for 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 everybody to have something to look forward to. If Liverpool can play anywhere near the level they did on the, against in the first game, I think they should be okay. My only fear, which is probably your fear and everybody else's is that that early goal comes and the confidence is knocked uh, and maybe there's a mistake and uh, and it goes on from there. But if Liverpool can get a goal, even if it's even if they're 2-0 down and they get that one goal back, the dynamic of the tie changes yet again. So there's enough there for Liverpool to be confident, even should they go 2-0 down to, to get hold of that tie again. Thank you very much to Chris. Uh, that's been your Talking Red. Subscribe uh, to the Anfield Wrap and everything that you need before and after this massive, massive game against Leipzig.